Hi there, welcome to another of my reviews of Ty Lopez's 67 Steps, his guide to upping your health, wealth, love, and happiness. We're on step number 40. This one is Practical Pessimism, Paris Hilton's Grandfather and Contemplating the Downside, the Fine Balance of Proper Perspective. So, out there in the big world, we seem to be, be seem to be bombarded by one of two outlooks. You know, the unfortunately the most prevalent outlook is the woe is me, I'm downtrodden, and things are against me, that outlook. And then the other one is this, maybe in response to that, um, the tide of that one, was the other one is this, you know, all you have to do is think positive, say daily affirmations and life's going to be, you know, great for you. Um, nothing wrong with affirmations, but action is what does it. So those are the two things. And as usual, Ty talks about don't be on the edges, kind of be practical, be aware. And he's got something he calls practical pessimism. Where that comes from, I'm not sure. And we start out talking about uh, Paris Hilton's grandfather. Now, I don't know from Paris Hilton, so let's just talk about Conrad Hilton. I don't know why we have to say Paris Hilton's grandfather. Conrad Hilton, of course, built the famous hotel chain. And when he was younger, he was really inspired by Helen Keller, the story of Helen Keller, who, you know, of course, came over amazing hardship um, to become an exceptional person. And, and that kind of optimism uh, really inspired Hilton. And so he built up a hotel chain, as you do. And that was before the Depression. And then the stock market crash came, and he really lost it all. You know, I, I think he lost all of his hotels except one. And through persuasion, he managed to hold on to that one remaining hotel throughout the Depression and eventually ended up restarting the chain based on that one hotel and became at one point the biggest certainly the most successful monetarily hotel chain in the world so he had optimism for the long term you know maybe he didn't have day-to-day -day power of positive thinking everything's going to be great when i get out of bed I would imagine, given several factors, that he probably did not have that. But he knew what he wanted. He had the optimism of the end in mind. You know, and you need you as an entrepreneur, if you're an entrepreneur watching this, um, you need more faith and more optimism than the average person. You shouldn't be delusional. Um, Ty likes to talk about the American Idol factor. You know, you're not going to go on American Idol and win unless you're really, really good. And same thing in business. You're not going to succeed at your business unless you really, really know the things that your business is based on. And so, you know, be have faith, optimism, but not delusional. And you have faith because you're doing what you're good at. You know, you you this whole Eulerian destiny, all this stuff s sticks together, you know. So it's all built up, you know. You've figured out where your strengths are, what your advantage is, and how you're going to build this business on for you, based on you, and or build your life or whatever it is you want to talk about. And so you have optimism because of that, you know. And so you move towards optimistic goals through pessimism, which sounds a bit weird. And that's that whole phrase, you know, uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Pessimism is not in being negative. It's about preparing. You know, when you put your seatbelt on, you're not thinking negatively. You're for preparing for the fact that maybe you're going to have a crash. So pessimism is your tool against the inevitable downside because it's going to happen. You know, things will go wrong at some point. They go wrong for everybody at some point. The better you prepare, the less of a dip you're going to have. And, you know, you have to think about the downside. Make multiple plans, build up your skills, learn more, get fit, 
You know, is these things are all tied together. If your body's not in good shape, your brain's not in good shape, your business isn't in good shape. That's my belief. And, you know, have an end game goal that's optimistic, but take your steps along the way. So that's this one. That's step number 40. Again, maybe it's repetitive. I've done so many of these I don't even remember, but I like it. I like this one. Uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best has always been a motto of mine. And uh, I think it's a really valuable lesson. You know, don't confuse pessimism for negativity. So here he's got four questions on this one. Question number one was, <clears throat> which side have you been too heavy on? Negative or positive thinking? Unjustified negative or positive thinking? What's the root of that? Why are you like that? And what are you going to do differently to smooth things out? And what's your optimistic end goal, but your pessimistic guards against the bumps in the road? There we go. Step 40. That means we've got, you can see me calculating, I know, in my eyes. That means we've got 37 steps to go. I hope you stick through with me, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.